Okay, now we're going to establish those movements, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go back to my uh, my uh, flat brush. This is a number six. You can use a four or a number six, depending on the size of the bird. Let's go to a number four here. And we'll come in now uh, onto the bird here, okay? And I'm going to start working my colors here onto my palette. I'll just go ahead and set this. This will hurt my blue a little bit, but I'm going to restate everything again anyway. So it's uh that's just the idea is there to help me do this and we'll start uh working in here you know on her and some of the movement not the actual feathers but some of the movement uh for the feathers okay so first we have uh, some of the undertone here i will start some of the movements by grabbing we have our yellow over here and she has a real light kind of tan color to her also so i'm going to take some of my toned color here which is my black and my red and some burnt sienna right down into my yellows here and a little bit of that hot so that's a nice color right there i'll start to add a little bit of white to that right over here make the lighter version uh, not a highlight but just a lighter version kind of a tan kind of color that she is here and we'll come in and we're going to start some of the movement now let's start out to here right in the nape of her neck where it's going to go right over the mantle here and I'll just pull down this way with kind of a medium stroke. That's going to put in some of the light here and establish a little bit of that contour movement uh, to that feathering there. If you want to do some general movement, um, let's say restate some of that area right in there. Take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of the brown. You can just move like this and you can see you can come back in and almost get the look of feathers. But more than anything else, you're establishing the movement. So let's take some of that light. Let's go back here, pick up some of that light. We'll come right in here. I want this cheekbone kind of feathers coming this way. And so this will establish some of that movement. I'll leave a little bit of light ring around her face there like that. I can touch in a little bit of dark at, or that medium tone and pull back the other way here. And that will soften some of that movement. I will, on a, down into here, I'll soften movement with my finger a lot. But up in here in the small area, sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes you can reach up there. But let's take a little bit of that. that and let's, our contour is going to go like this, like this, like this, and down like this. So I'll angle this and slowly come around. This builds her body up a little bit more, builds her, her colors to her feathers a little bit more, and establishes a little more movement. So sometimes I'll do that and then pick up a little tight, slightly different yellow. And notice I model these yellows. In my brush I don't mix them I just touch them into a model it and I want these tones you don't want to copy the same tone overs again so here I put a little bit of kind of a greenish little color into that but I want to model this don't copy the tones that's what what bottled acrylics did to us they they everyone thinks they have to have the same color because we squirt it all out and I think that's sad we I don't I like that I just get a yellowish tone in here and we'll change it several times. So now I've got a little bit of the look, work of the tone there. We'll grab a little more light, which is going to go underneath her, her neck here. And pull that down. And that will get that movement there. So you see, I'm, I'm without doing too many feathery looks here, I'm getting the movement that it, she is going to have into her feathers. Here, we'll take some of this lighter yellow. We'll come right down here. We'll establish right the point of her breast here, right down into this area. I got it right into that green. I'm going to push it back just a bit. I'll go back and forth. Sometimes in the steps, you'll see me take green like this, right into her like this, and then push the yellow back out again like that. That not only gives me a different tone, helps her harmonize with her background, but it allows little bits of green to go in and out of there, and it'll make her feathers look softer against that edge which really works nice. I'll continue a little longer strokes down her body here and move this in through here. Now, if some of you see my color still wet right in through here. And for some of you, as you, you know, one of the habits that you have, and I know this because I was, you know, I did it for a long time, is that you think everything that you're painting at each stage has to be perfect. I'm not even thinking anything perfect right now. I'm just putting color on. But if you're thinking that and you're painting to copy something, what happens is you play and you play and you play and then your colors dry as you play. That's going to happen. 
That's a natural part of learning how to paint because we all copy to learn. So that's fine. But if that happens to you and you want to do some softening here, don't forget, if I'm putting this color down right here and I'm pushing this, I can use my finger right in here and soften this because my dark is still wet. But if it isn't, if that dark is not wet, put this down like this, this tone down in here, then just reach up and grab a dark tone. It does not have to be the same dark tone. Push that in like that and you'll get that softness back and you can work your finger in and out of there to get that, that softer tone to that, okay? Um, but always work into the wet tones back and forth. So if you're in an area and that tone is dry, just put it on, then go back and hit it with the darker tone or shadow tone and then work the two together, okay? You don't have to worry about pulling holes or anything like this like we did with earlier generation acrylics. These won't pull holes anymore. That that has all been worked out and is gone. So you can just paint and paint and paint and paint and work your tones. So I'll work those in there just like that. Okay, and that works really, really nice um, here. Okay, so I'm giving some of these nice feather movements that I had into here. Um, as I come in to hear the ideas of some of these areas here. Now, she has white uh, tips to her coverts and to the other feathers. There's, I, I show you quite a few ways to do that. Um, you know, in the painting here, you can use your liner brush, of course, and put them on. You could use your round brush and put them on, put on the edge with a round brush. That's pretty easy. A lot of times I'll take a little corner of the brush like this and I'll say I'll come right up into here like this. Now that what that corner is, I'll lead this feather with that corner like that. And I'll just put on this way and then I'll put on another stroke up here. And that'll start to look just like feathers. I'm just reloading the corner of that brush using the brush on its chisel like this. And this is the beauty of this little fusion and pulling that up and pulling that up there right there. So now you get the look of those little coverts like that, the, the light little edges to the coverts. Sometimes I'll put on the edges of the um, flight feathers here with the white as well. Now, if you push the white where the white is on the leading edge, you don't have as much control. But if you turn the brush like this, angle it just a little bit, pick up just a corner here, angle it a little bit so you can see where that, that edge is like that. And you can use the edge of this, just the chisel of that, to put on some line, some nice detail to some of those, those primary and secondary feathers here. Uh, just a little bit of detail in there, a little bit of movement. So sometimes I'll do that with the edge of the filbert, or the edge of the flat. Sometimes I'll do that with the liner brush. Sometimes I do that with the number four. All of it is okay, and all of it will give you a different look. And I'll come back and do some more of this. Um, you know, here in just a little bit, probably with the liner brush. So, you know, it's just giving you some different looks to it. And that's all you want. And I don't want to be too perfect right now, but that's what I want to have. We have a little bit more of some of the uh, medial col coverts here. We can just give that and let these run right up in here into the mantle here, the mantle area. So a little bit of light coming right here. We'll let this just kind of because I don't want to get I don't want to get anatomically correct too much on her. I want her to be more casual. So I'm just going to create some movement here for that. Maybe just a bit more white. I love this white little tipping that comes right in this area on her. So I just want to get some white or light color movement like this. I don't want a feather. I just want to get pull down and get some of that movement that's down like that that she always has right there on those scapulars that and here they're pulling down so here's the mantle and it's pulling down gently I call this whole thing the mantle but these pull down this way you see that and so she has that kind of feeling there so I'll impart just a little bit of that movement of the pulling down there I like to do that okay so you're going to have areas of the um, light part of the neck in here and you can just grab that movement. Now when I grab this brush, you can really see the movement a little bit lighter, a little bit more movement down here, okay? You can have a little bit of light. She will, and it all depends, you know. I mean, it's dangerous to be out this far and give those light tips that, that this little female chaffinch has to this tail out here because that's pulling way out away from your center of interest. So you might want to just run it with your finger like that and soften that out, okay? But uh, that's basically how I go about uh, 
but doing that up, okay? So we have the uh, feather movement. That's what we're adding right now, These this uh, feather movement. Now we'll go in and we'll take a look at some large area feathers, okay? <laughs> 